I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. This is what remains of 14 homes set ablaze in the West Bank village of Taipei. An angry Muslim mob from a neighboring village attacked the Christian town last September. They said they were avenging the dishonor of a Muslim woman allegedly impregnated by a Christian employer from Taipei. Taipei is the only West Bank village completely inhabited by Christians, about 2,000 of them. It was originally called Ephraim. It's mentioned in the Old Testament and in the book of John as a village where Jesus stayed. Mayor David Horry says the attack would not have occurred if Taipei were a Muslim village instead of a Christian one. It happened many times between Muslim and Muslim and what they did is uh, most times they would just marry the girl off and have they gave us a chance and proved that this uh, pregnancy was from the man from Taipei maybe we would have uh, married him off to that girl. Palestinian officials are downplaying what happened here depicting it as a dispute between families the result of an out of wedlock romance but some villages insist the incident was pure religious hatred Taipei Christians were used as scapegoats some of the 400 attackers were reportedly heard shouting Allah u Akbar, God is great as they threw Molotov cocktails at Christian houses we've hidden the identity of this West Bank evangelist for his protection we'll call him Nadim he suggests Palestinian authorities are covering up a larger problem a rising tide of Muslim intolerance and violence directed against the Christian minority. It's a downplay in order to avoid a bigger issue, which would be a fight on the village level when you have villages attacking other villages. It's easier for them to downplay it in order to avoid the bigger problem, which I don't know there will be enough officials around to handle it if it were to come about. The attack on the village of Taipei is one more example of the precarious position of Christians in the West Bank and throughout the Middle East. Last February, hundreds of Druze Muslims attacked Palestinian Christians in the northern Israeli village of Mugar. Rioters damaged 125 homes and businesses after a Druze teenager spread the false rumor that Christians had posted pornographic images of Druze women on the internet. Palestinian Christians are in very dire straits. International human rights attorney Justice Weiner has researched the plight of Palestinian Christians for more than eight years. His findings were recently published by the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Weiner says Palestinian Christians are now living in fear because persecution against them is increasing. I think that the uh, situation has been on a, a steep downhill uh, for at least uh, 12 years since Israel withdrew from the uh, uh, Palestinian populated areas of the West Bank and Gaza. They uh, fear for their own lives, they fear for their family, they fear for their future as a community. A community that many Christians believe will be marginalized as the Palestinians move towards statehood. It's uh, a hurt church. It's a suffering church. There's no mercy. This Palestinian woman suggests the marginalization of Christians has already begun. We'll it call her Hanan. We've hidden her identity to protect her from retribution. Hanan says Christians are now being treated as second-class citizens in the Holy Land because Islamists dominate the Palestinian Authority. Now all the leadership and the people who are in authority, Muslims, and they force their laws, their teachings, their Quran, everything in uh, courts, in the, everywhere, in the schools, everywhere, you know, they threaten people. People are afraid to say no. Western leaders say elections scheduled for January prove the Palestinians are committed to establishing a democratic society. But the draft Palestinian constitution shows a government consigned to institutionalizing Islam over secularism. While the draft constitution pledges to guarantee freedom of worship, Islam is stated as the official religion of Palestine. 
Sharia law is stated as the primary source of legislation. Under Sharia law, any Muslim who leaves Islam and converts to another faith must be killed. And so it was for falafel stand owner Ahmed El Akwal. This father of eight converted to Christianity and held regular Bible studies in his home. He suffered repeated arrests and torture at the hands of Palestinian Authority police. Weiner met and interviewed Akwal prior to his death Something in January 2004. Released. He showed me at the time the results of uh, his what were then recent arrests, which included uh, burns uh, all over his body, um, where uh, huts, hut pieces of, of sheet metal were uh, taken from a fire and, uh, and uh, touched to his skin. And on January 21st, uh, 2004, uh, someone knocked on the door. He opened the door and he was met with a hail of bullets and was shot dead in the entrance to his, in the entrance to his apartment. A lot of families, they are leaving because they can't do anything about th what's going on. They can't take it. They can't handle it. Hanan says half of her family members left the West Bank because of persecution against them. Her family is not alone. Political instability, economic hardship, and human rights violations have caused a mass exodus of Christians from the West Bank and throughout the Middle East. One recent study shows the Christian presence in Israel, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and the Palestinian Authority has declined from a population of 26.4% in 1914 to less than 10% today. The city of Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, was once a Christian city. Several decades ago, it was perhaps more than 80% Christian. Today, the Christian population has declined to less than 15%. While their numbers may be fewer and persecution against them is increasing, thousands of Christians have chosen to remain in the Holy Land, and some are quietly leading Muslims to Christ. When the person's faith is true, and they realize that their suffering doesn't go unnoticed by God, they see that they are doing something for the cause of Christ and furthering His kingdom. Then they grow with more courage, and still the work goes on. In his second letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul said those who live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. Nearly 2,000 years later, those words are ringing true for Palestinian Christians in the Holy Land, where persecution is now a way of life. From the West Bank, Chris Mitchell, CBN News.